The Chamber of Commerce celebrated inspirational women during a luncheon at Addison Oaks. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as the Orient Art Center's Art and Flower Fair brought in record numbers. Lake Orion Robotics Team 302 already started recruiting for the upcoming school year with LO Robo Expo at the high school. And well over 200 runners and walkers took part in the annual Dragon Dash 5K at the Orient Center. We'll have highlights coming up. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. We'll have those stories and so much more coming up on this edition of ON TV News. The Orient Area Chamber of Commerce offers numerous networking opportunities throughout the year, including events that celebrate the community's female business leaders. Recently, the Chamber hosted a brand new event that featured some inspirational speakers. On Thursday, May 16th, the Chamber of Commerce hosted their inaugural Women of Inspiration Luncheon at Addison Oaks Buell Estate. Approximately 120 attendees, mostly women, enjoyed a buffet lunch and everyone was entered into a raffle for a chance to win prizes donated by sponsors. Today they'll experience the camaraderie of similar-minded professionals, mainly again women of inspiration. Um, they also are having the opportunity to network with a lot of different people. So we have from large companies such as General Motors down to home-based businesses, very small businesses. So this is an opportunity for us all to gather, to support each other, and to inspire each other. They also will be walking away with a pink swag bag, which is filled with goodies from our members, um, all kinds of really cool things, eye masks, makeup mirrors, very female inspired. And then also, they will walk away with a uh, liquid soap that's made by everybody at Dutton Farm. Yeah, I saw they have like a little product table up there. They do. They have an expo table, so a few of the farmers are here today, and they are selling their product, and it looks to be very busy over there. There's candles, soaps, lotions, all kinds of really great things. And then we also have our expo table with Mosheri companies, and they're here, and they have free giveaways for everyone, too. Following lunch, Michelle Smither talked about the history of Dutton Farm in Rochester, which she founded in 2010 to serve the special needs community trying to give uh, purpose and dignity and uh, something for people to do that were sitting home every day through no fault of their own. So we just started with half a dozen people and it evolved from there to over a hundred. <laughs> you must be proud to see your daughters continuing the legacy yeah. and thriving today. Very much, very much. It does my heart good, especially as I age, to know that this will go on because it's very important, it's very important. Dutton Farm CEO Jenny Brown also spoke and introduced her sister Becca Smither who is the inspiration for Dutton Farm. Being just here today with all of these women has already been uplifting. Um, but to know that all of these women come together and care about lifting each other up and just hearing about what we do at Dutton Farm, just that alone means the world to us. What types of things do you want to talk about today? Uh, just appreciate the women that are in the room and the journey that we're all on and just really encouraging them in their own journey about leadership and what it takes to be a good leader um, and some of the myths of leadership like nice guys finish last, it's not true, um, and just some of my experiences with leadership. Thank you to them, right? Yeah, as a binder, as a binder, yeah. yeah. They make your life better? It makes my life better. Yes. <laughs> make me happy, don't they mind. Sure. That's, all, that's what it's about, right? Bottom line? For more information, you can visit DuttonForum.org. And for information about upcoming networking events at the Chamber, you can visit OrientAreaChamber.com. Downtown Lake Orion welcomed the annual Art and Flower Fair back with open arms with crowds flooding the streets while enjoying the beautiful weather, artists, and flower galore. On Saturday, May 18th and Sunday, May 19th, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were filled with flowers, many forms of unique art, families, and activities to celebrate the return of the Art and Flower Fair. 
With over 100 vendors present, live music, artist demonstrations, crafts, and delicious treats available, shoppers had the chance to meet local artists and find something unique for their homes and gardens. The warm weather and fair skies made the weekend a record-breaking success and a great way for those attending to support the Orient Art Center while enjoying what the community has to offer. Yeah, this is one of the, the biggest years. I think this beautiful weather, we were due for a good art and flower fair uh, weather weekend. So I definitely think the sunshine is bringing people out. Um, we've done a really good job with marketing and all of the vendors, we um, sent all of our marketing stuff out to them. So they've been sharing it and sharing it. And I think that has piqued a lot of interest in the area. And of course our partners with On TV and Orient Review have done such a great job um, marketing and advertising for us too. I think it's gonna be a really big weekend. So can you tell us about some of the flowers that you have here? We have two different kinds of flowers uh, on this side of the road and then on the other. All the flowers here, the pots, everything, all the proceeds go towards the Orient Art Center. These are from harvest time, so they bring them over here and then we get part of the proceeds and part of it goes to harvest time. But the ones on this side of the street all were donated to us and we get to keep the 100%. The Orient Art Center is in its fourth year hosting the event after taking it over from the Lake Orion DDA. But the Art and Flower Fair has been a staple in the downtown area for 24 years. The fair grows every year with proceeds allowing the Art Center opportunities to support artists of all ages with classes and other creative experiences. From paintings to vibrant flowers on every corner, and even one-of-a-kind yard art made from recycled materials, we talked to some of the artists that lined the streets of Flint and Broadway, sharing artwork while also telling the stories behind their pieces. Well, I take used and discarded tools, and I cut them up, bend them, weld them together to make yard art. My mom, I grew up with an artist for a mother and I was re gonna retire, uh, this was like three or four years ago, and my mother said, you need to do something, and she wanted me to do art, and so I knew how to weld. My father had taught me how to weld. So she just decided for me that I was going to start doing this yard art. Um, so I retired, and I've been making yard art. I have a shop that I, in my home, and I, every day, that's what I do. How do you feel about these community events? Well, I love the community events. I'd rather do a show like this in like a downtown area than any other. Um, the turnout seems to be pretty good. It's a steady flow of people, and we couldn't ask for better weather, you know, so, yeah. They're clay pot people, I call them. They're made out of terracotta pots. And um, everything's freehand painted. There's no stencils or anything. It's all freehand. So what does it mean to be here at this event today um, in Lake Orion? Um, great, I was so glad I could do this show. Um, I, I did it um, two other times before, and it's been a great show. Can you tell us a little bit about the art that you have here today? Yeah, for sure. It is mostly Michigan subject matter, and the reason I do it is people travel all over Michigan, love Michigan, especially Mackinac Island, and when I can capture the essence of what they experience on a vacation, they buy a piece, they hang it in their home, and every time they look at it, they have these fond, warm memories. And that, that's why I do it, because Michigan's a beautiful place to live. What do events like these mean to you as an artist? What it does for me is I get out and I get to relate to people of all different walks of life, which is amazing, because out of all the things I've created, all of these people have been created by the ultimate artist. So I am literally looking at masterpieces of the Almighty. The weekend was a wonderful way to get a sneak peek of what's to come for the 15th annual Dragon on the Lake Festival, August 23rd through the 25th. For more information about the Orient Art Center, visit orientartcenter.org. You can also find details about the upcoming festival by visiting dragononthelake.com. Lake Orient's robotics team promotes science, technology, engineering, and math and demonstrates what students can do with these skills and just how much fun it really is. On the evening of Monday, May 13th, Lake Orion Robotics Team 302 hosted their annual LO Robo Expo at Lake Orion High School. Students from all great levels are interested in robotics were invited to the event to see demonstrations and maybe even control the robot. Team 302 has programs at Lake Orion's elementary schools, middle schools, and high school. And the Robo Expo may inspire students to join. Right 
We are always looking for more kids. We're always looking for more engagement. Um, you know, we say that in robotics, um, this is the only sport that the kids will ever do that when they graduate, they will go pro. This is what they'll do for the rest of their career. Representatives of Team 302 from all great levels, from kindergarten to high school, were present at the expo to show off their accomplishments in competitive robotics from the past school year. Team 302's Bruce Stone talked about the life skills students learn while taking part in the program. All of this is about problem solving, and teamwork, um, learning engineering and science and technology skills, um, teamwork, working, learning how to work in a team in a competitive environment where it's kind of like the environment you would have at work. And um, what the kids are getting out of it is that growth and maturity, um, both intellectually as well as through teamwork. Team 302 has already started recruiting students as they look ahead to the 2024-25 school year. If you or someone you know is interested in joining the program, visit team302.org for more information. You can also find them on Facebook as First Team 302. The arrival of consistently warm weather means there is no shortage of 5K races taking place throughout Oakland County. Local runners had a chance to explore the scenic Polly Ann Trail during a popular annual race. On the morning of Sunday, May 19th, Orion Township Parks and Rec hosted the 28th annual Dragon Dash 5K on the Polly Ann Trail. More than 200 runners and walkers registered for the race, with an additional 32 walk-ons arriving at the Orion Center that morning. Well, it doesn't get any better than this. It's just perfect out here this morning. The sun is shining, temperatures are great, there's no rain, the course is dry. This is what you hope for when you organize something, you know, six, eight months out. This is, this is what you hope for and this is what we got. Participants left the Orion Center at 9 a.m. and made their way to the Polly Ann Trail where they headed south towards Civic Center Park. There, they turned around and returned to the finish line back at the Orion Center. For the first time in the race's history, the entry fees collected were donated to a nonprofit organization, Orion Area Youth Assistance. We're doing something different this year. We're actually um, fundraising for scholarships for Orion Area Youth Assistance. So all proceeds from this run will go directly to them. They will um, be awarding scholarships for participants that need financial aid to register for programs within the community. Crossing the finish line first was 31-year-old Alexander Pollock of Lake Orion. He finished with a time of 18 minutes and 42 seconds. It was the second year in a row he took first place at the Dragon Dash. It's hard to prepare for the heat because we're coming out of winter, so I think the heat got everybody today, but I don't know. I just run a lot and have fun with it, and that's how I prepare. Yeah, so my wife runs. We run together. We used to run together every day. Um, we have different paces, but now we got two kids, so I'm pushing the stroller most of the time, so that kind of evens out the pace. So it's been fun the last couple of years running with kids and even doing some races with kids. Maria Brandon of Lake Orange was the first female to cross the finish line with a time of 20 minutes, 8 seconds. Oh, this is like my fourth year doing the Dragon Dash, and the parks does such an awesome job with it. Um, yeah, I had a blast out there. It was a great course. It was so well administrated. Yeah. <laughs> I run to be fit and healthy and for, yeah, for my mental health, for my physical health and for my family, for these little ones right here. They're my, they're my running buddies. We do lots of stroller runs together, don't we? Coming up on the Parks and Rec calendar is the Outdoor Community Garage Sale and Toy and Comic Expo, scheduled for Saturday, June 1st. The Wildwood concert season kicks off on Thursday, June 13th, with a performance by the North Oakland Concert Band. And summer kicks into high gear with Summer Sizzle on Thursday, June 2nd. Enjoy food, games, and music at the Orion Center on Jocelyn Road. For more information, visit orionparks.com. Downtown Lake Orion is thriving, and when one business closes its doors, it seems there's another business just waiting for an opportunity to fill that retail space. On Thursday, May 9th, representatives of the Orion Chamber and DDA were joined by family, friends, and fellow business owners to help celebrate the official grand opening of Boutique Chic in downtown Lake Orion with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Okay. One, two, three. Boutique Chic! They have been. 
I mean, vital in the changeover. Everyone has been so welcoming. Um, the DDA, they pushed and pushed. I was having trouble with my sign getting up on time, and Matt went to bat for me. He made it happen. Um, all of the businesses have been so welcoming to me. Um, even Cookies and Cream right now is featured as my treat in there inside. So um, they've been wonderful. The Chamber has given me so many different networking um, options and abilities, and it's just been fabulous. Lake Orient native Annalisa Costantino inherited the space from Simply Marcella, who has had a presence in downtown Lake Orion since 2012. She found out in January that the space would become available, began the transition in April, and opened her doors on May 1st. She takes pride in the fact that many of the products she offers has been made by women-owned businesses and causes. So my store primarily focuses on women-owned businesses, designs, and organizations that give back to their communities and globally. Um, I try to feature women-owned artistry. You'll see many of that throughout the boutique. Um, my focus one is Ring True. It's jewelry that's made by trafficking survivors that can't leave their safe house, and this is a way for them to earn an income as well as help in the healing process. Um, so I have that featured right at the front of the boutique. Boutique Chic is located at 120 South Broadway in downtown Lake Orion. For more information, you can call 248-814-7400 or visit shopboutiquechic.com. As Orion Township moves forward with plans to relocate its offices to Great Lakes Athletic Club, it's still business as usual at the Orion Center, which continues to bustle with activity. On Thursday, May 9th, Orion Township Parks and Recreation partnered with Ascension Providence Rochester Hospital for the second year to put on the Motherhood Matters Health and Safety Seminar. In addition to several speakers, nearly 20 vendors offered information and giveaways. Yeah, we're so grateful for our community partners. They did a wonderful job. Um, lots of giveaways, lots of love and dedication to the community and it's nice to see them all come together today. Several speakers came together to share information about keeping children safe while driving and answering questions mothers have about breastfeeding. The event was scheduled to tie in with the upcoming Mother's Day weekend and support moms and moms-to-be. Those present also had opportunities to enter raffles and win prizes. The night even allowed those who attended to gather tips and tricks about practicing daily tasks, such as picking up laundry or other items off the ground while pregnant, thanks to help from the Great Lakes Athletic Club team. Keep your shins upright, slight bend of the knees, and what you're doing is pushing those glutes back. So you'll see her hands are staying right by her sides to keep the tension. A good way to learn this movement is to stand by a wall and you'll just take one step away from the wall, push your glutes back till you touch the wall, and then stand tall. Ascension Providence Hospital is at the Orient Center every Monday and Friday from 9 to 12. For more information, visit ascension.org slash classes or check out greatlakesathleticclub.com. And with that, we will wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks so much for watching.